Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. Why do I find myself always apologizing for a late start? But I think it's a good thing. Township committee and conference session had a legal and personnel session. Uh, I wish we could allow everybody in on those, but uh, we did uh, we did make some important decisions at that time. All right, adequate notice of this uh, May the 25th, 2017 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice and agenda of the meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building 1000 Route 10 Township of Hanover by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers. Mars County's Daily Record, Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with the Township Clerk. May I have a roll call? Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Faramoska. Here. Committee Man Bruno. Here. Committee Man Coppola. Here. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, would you all please rise, those that can, and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Please be seated. Gentlemen, at this time, uh, let's see, you want to conduct a public hearing on the, the Morris County Open Space Fund. All right. Um, and then we'll open to the public. All right, so yeah. Mr. Administrator, item four, you okay. got it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the township will be submitting a grant application to the Mars County Open Space Trust Fund uh, for uh, acquisition of 50 Parsippany Road in Whippany, also designated as Lot 2 in Block 4204, and set forth on the tax map of the township of Hanover. The notice of tonight's public hearing was published in the Daily Record on May 11th and May 15th, and we have the affidav affidavits of publication as proof that the notifications were placed in the Daily Record. Um, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Ms. Barbara Davis, the Vice President of Programs for the Land Conservancy of New Jersey, Barbara is our professional technical consultant on uh, open space matters. And at this time, uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Davis to step forward, and she will make a presentation to the Township Committee this evening and members of the public. Good evening. Is it OK to stand here? Well, sure. pick, pick up one of those mics. So they come out of there? Uh, yes, that yeah. does come out. Pull it right okay. out. Just pull it out. Just pull it up. No. Nope. nope. It's a fancy new system. It's called Brown. School. Now, now we clear. Now we clearly get you on the record. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Barbara Heskins Davis. I'm vice president of programs at the Land Conservancy of New Jersey, and I'm here tonight uh, for two purposes. One, two go over your um, pending grant application for the Morris County Open Space Trust Fund. And then I'd like to testify on behalf of the Land Conservancy in support of your application. The second thing I'd like to do very briefly towards the end is the municipality is considering an application also for a trail grant to the Morris County Open Space Trust Fund. And I'd like to just you know, tell you a little bit about the trail grant and the process. So if you have any questions as part of the um, public portion that can be asked as well um, just to be clear the trail grant does not require a public hearing but it will require a resolution of support authorizing the application um, sometime during the month of June so with that um, the municipality is applying to preserve a one acre property known as the Whippany River Blue Way it's on the corner of Parsippany Road and Mount Pleasant Avenue <coughs> Um, the property is located at the corner of Mount Pleasant Avenue and Parsippany Road. It borders Malapartis Creek. Um, it's along the Whippany River and the Morristown and Erie Railroad. Um, the property has been used uh, formally as a post office. It was severely flooded in 2011 as part of Hurricane Irene and has been unoccupied since uh, 2011. The building is basically a shell and I have pictures of it to show you. Uh, the property is interesting. You can see on the site map that the building takes up 
a good portion of the property. The plans are that the town would remove the building and restore the property to kind of a grassed area for a vast, a vest pocket park. This is a part of the municipality that's currently underserved by um, public open space, and there's a lot of local businesses in the area whose um, employees and whose uh, visitors to those businesses would appreciate the opportunity to bring their lunch, take a seat, and enjoy the spot. It's really a pretty spot in the municipality. So this is the tax map where you see the location of the property, and it's um, bolded on the map. And these are uh, the maps that show the location of the property on the, um, on the aerial map so you can see the river. Um, what's interesting about this property is I didn't realize it's not far from land that's currently owned by the Morris County Park Commission that's shown in green. Um, those properties were originally owned by the New Jersey Conservation Foundation who transferred ownership to the Park Commission. This is a, a flood map uh, for the property. The property is entirely located within the floodway, um, and a portion of it is located in the flood hazard area. Um, this property would be very difficult to redevelop. The current owner would be able to restore the building, but if he wanted to do any improvements to the building or the facility or the grounds, um, the engineer has stated that it would be um, challenging for him to do and most likely very expensive. So this is the building. As I said, it's currently unoccupied. This is the front as you're looking at it. You can see the property is currently for lease. Um, the township has been in contact with the owner about the possibility of purchasing and um, discussions are underway but not necessarily resolved. It's a really pretty spot. It's um, got both the sun coming in, which is nice for a park, um, and it has the brook running along the back side of it. It is an um, historic, it's not necessarily a historic site, but it is historic in nature in that it's um, located within the village of Whippany. Um, the site used to be the location of the uh, former municipal building. And again, this is a picture of looking at the historic sign towards Parsippany Road. This is the back side of the building with the truck loading dock. Um, the municipality's intentions are to remove the building um, and keep the parking facility so that if people wanted to park on the site, they could, but they would remove the whole truck loading area. So it's possible, right now it supports 24 cars, which is probably too many for this size as a park. So part of the parking area may be removed and it's really up to the town as they acquire it. This is the side of the building. You can see the brook uh, running along the side. And again, a little bit of a closer view. And this is right along the side. It's not surprising this is in the floodway. The brook is right there. And this is the opposite side, in the edge of the parking facility. This is the brook itself. This is the interior of the building. I was really surprised when the appraiser sent these photos back. I did not realize that it was truly empty. It's a shell. And um, the lease with the post office, formerly operated as a post office, um, has expired. Um, and the post office hasn't been in operation since 2011. And again, another picture of the building. The site is served by public water and sewer, but there's no facilities in the building right now. When we updated your open space and recreation plan um, in 2011, um, we um, included a public lands and preserved lands map. And you can see in the red arrow in the center of the town how this um, is very strategically located. It's, again, kind of catty corner to that property that's owned by the Morris County Park Commission. And it is part of your Whippany River Blueway. And you can see a close up of the property here. What I really like about this site is that Hanover, and I've worked in Hanover a long time, um, you do your open space program in a very balanced approach. It's systematic, you're not reactive, you're proactive. And what I like about this is that all of your planning builds upon one another. So you have your open space and recreation plan. You've had an open space plan uh, probably since 2001, 2002, and then you updated in 2011. Building upon your open space plan, you then hired a consultant to develop what you call the connectivity plan. And the connectivity plan is innovative because it's not just 
you know, what I would do would be a trails through your woods. Mm -hmm. It really looked in depth mm -hmm. as to where your residents live, where your businesses are located, <coughs> and how you can get people out. It focused on a healthier lifestyle for the people who work here and the people who live here. And what I truly like about this property is that it's part of that connectivity plan. It's surrounded by a sidewalk. It's going to offer an opportunity for people to sit down and enjoy the site. And it's a really nice addition and amenity to your connectivity plan. And you can see from the open space plan update we did that was two years prior to your connectivity plan, we highlighted this site as one that's next to Patriot's Path, that's next to those areas owned by the Morris County Park Commission, and is an ideal location um, for a Vest Pocket Park. What's also interesting, and I find this kind of entertaining about Morris County, is they do have a bicycle p pedestrian plan, of which they haven't implemented, but they do have it, and this property is located right along it. Hmm. So with that, I'm happy to answer questions on the application. Um, and if you'll indulge me, I do want to speak as Vice President of the Land Conservancy. The Land Conservancy has worked with the municipality since 2001 on your open space program. We have found that the municipality is thoughtful about your open space acquisitions, that you leverage your very limited municipal dollars with state and county funding. You've achieved great success in your open space program. You've preserved properties of large size, and you've looked at properties that represent those holes where you need to fill, fulfill a, a local need. This property fulfills a local need. It services a segment of your population that's currently underserved by parks and open space. It offers an opportunity to continue to implement your connectivity plan, and it's a wonderful addition to your open space acquisition um, program. So Land Conservancy fully supports your application. Um, the next steps for the municipality are to hold this public hearing tonight, to receive comments from the public, and then to vote on the resolution authorizing the submittal of the application. The applications this year, they've changed the time frame, which is why I'm here in May versus June. Um, they're due June 16th. The um, application will be delivered to the municipality for their review prior to that date. The municipality will submit the application and all require attachments to the county. There will be a site visit this fall and presentations in October. Typically they announce the decisions on the applications following the election. So I would anticipate sometime before Thanksgiving the um, township should know whether or not they receive funding. We have found that over the past several years that the county trust fund has been undersubscribed in terms of applications to the county. So the town's coming in at a good time. They like to support municipal applications, and I feel that this is actually a very strong application for the municipality. So with that, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm also happy to talk about your trail grant. You tell me what you want me to do. This, uh, Barbara, we, can, we obviously, uh, Township Committee fully agrees with, with your assessment of this piece of property. Uh, it, uh, it has been demised and has been that way since the uh, hurricane season when it was flooded out last hurricane season uh, but we also see this as a uh, uh, part of a, a core area improvement uh, when we look at the greater region of uh, the Bayer corporations and uh, the MetLife's and etc that uh, have come into our town the improvements that we've made on Whippany Road uh, there's another benefit here to this accessing this property and that it not only uh, does it uh, front on Route 10 but it has a secondary access, which is through Parsippany Road coming down, so uh, it has easy access to all of our neighbors in that immediate area. There are additional improvements that are underway for the area, contiguous with this property. We don't know the outcome of that yet, but we do know that there will be improvements. So uh, once again, uh, this uh, adding this to open space or bringing it back to open space, and by the way, this is another argument that I do make every time I've appeared before the Morris County uh, Open Space and Farmland Preservation Trust is that uh, we, we have no, we're not the Hardings. Uh, we have no massive amounts of open space in Hanover Township, but open space that we do want in our township is gained by regaining open space from prior developed properties. So uh, our township committee would encourage uh, that the removal of the post office 
and returning this into a park-like setting as it was back in the early six, the late 1600s. You're absolutely correct. Historically, this was an earlier town hall area. Uh, so uh, we, we feel it meets the criteria. I'm sure your report supports that. And uh, unless any of my other members of my township committee have something to add. Ron, I just want to say, uh, Barbara, how much I appreciate what you do. I've dealt with you once before on Reynolds Avenue, and you're very thorough, and you, you, you're just uh, an incredible person to work with. And it seems as if you have Hanover Township uh, in your heart, as we do, and I appreciate what you do. It's very helpful to us to have somebody like you. Thank you. John. Yeah. Barbara, the, um, the, the, the Blue Way grant makes perfect sense. Uh, I think it would be a great amenity to um, the, the downtown Whippany area. Uh, I think it would, that green space is wonderful alongside the brook, as described, taking a blighted post office uh, location that's been essentially abandoned and problematic for any oh, yeah. redevelopment at all and turning it into something positive for the public. <laughs> Secondly, the connectivity plan. Um, this committee worked very hard on formulating a connectivity plan to advance health within our township both for our residents primarily, as well as connecting our corporate offices. Uh, the committee worked as well very hard to get it to become a ballot question. And the ballot question specifically is whether uh, open space funds should be spent in terms of implementing trails. And if I recall correctly, that was supported by, I think, two thirds of the respondents to that question. Um, so significant. Um, Hanover, is very, very eager and would see this as a great opportunity to take that area of Bee Meadow Park, which is one of our nicest parks within the township, and establish a, a trail around it mm. that ultimately, from a vision, connects to connectivity. So I think it's a big idea mm. which you are proposing, and, and I hope um, that you know the committee will support this um, so that we can move forward and provide this to the residents of our community because I think it's a it's a great win for one of our finest parks. Oh, yeah. It is phenomenal. Yeah. I, this I is agree this with John. is a this is an outgrowth though, uh, you know, and, and John brings it up to date, but uh, but some of us on this committee know that this is an outgrowth of uh, Patriots Path, and Hanover Township uh, over the years has acquired the lands for Patriots Path throughout the township. So we're really connecting the dots at this point. Yeah. We finished phase one, I think, at this point. Yeah, phase one. Yeah, so we're, we're well on our way, and uh, it's a path system that uh, for not only for our residents, but for our, our corporate neighbors as well that we can all benefit from. So I thank you for that. Any other questions of Barbara? Well, I, would think that, I would think that it's a real benefit, considering the fact that it's a benefit to us as well as the owner. And like you said, to, to really develop, redevelop that to a usable building, given the flood situation, would be humongous the cost that would be involved. So I think benefiting both the town and the owner, this is a great, great project, and I thank you. Should open it to the public at this point for a question. Yes. Barbara, yeah, at, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I want to. Yeah, gonna, uh, yeah what? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I think Barbara has comment. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to follow up on Committee Man Faramoska's comment about the Bee Meadow Park Trail. So the township is going to have two applications. What we presented tonight is the open space acquisition for the township to apply to acquire the property on Persephone Road, the one acre property. Um, the township at the end of June will be submitting a second application to the Morris County Open Space Trust Fund for a trail grant. So this goes directly to what the committee man was talking about and the proposal that's currently being discussed by engineering and by the township administrator's office is a nature trail around the two ponds at Bee Meadow Park. There is currently a trail there. It's really more of a, I would call it a goat path. <laughs> that is something that's just been kind of walked, um, but yeah. not formally recognized by the municipality. Um, I walked it yesterday with the engineering office. It's really pretty. It's a pretty site. It's um, over a mile in length. It's about a mile and a quarter. It's level, which in Morris County is a challenge. Um, it's completely accessible because you can park at the pool and get um, directly onto the path. And it's absolutely stunning. Um, I don't have the photographs, but I didn't know we were going to talk about it tonight. But um, I'm happy to send them to the municipality. It's just being put together now. The um, concept for this 
nature trail was really developed by the committee man and the engineering office and the land conservancy is working with them to put the application together so that will be done at the end of June and it's going to be a wonderful complement to the connectivity plan and the facilities at Bee Meadow Park. It's something that I think people will really enjoy and will also address I think some of the misuse that happens around those ponds because they're underutilized so they can be misused because <coughs> there are not enough people to be there. So it's really a pretty spot. Thank you. Robert, thank you for your presentation. Um, gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to open to the public for any questions they might have of Barbara in the kind of presentation that they make. <clears throat> Joe, go ahead. Joe, you want to redo her mic? No. Oh. <clears throat> Barb, hold on to that microphone. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Joseph, middle initial S, Mahalco. 12 Anna Terrace, the Whippany section of Hanover Township. Uh, the reason I just threw that S in, when I'll get to a question for our esteemed lecturer tonight, uh, there was some misinformation in, in uh, this week's Hanover Eagle. I am not running for Township Committee, if you read any of the editorials. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see why not, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, long overdue, long past due. <laughs> Uh, my question is, and, and I, I really am for this type of arrangement, who's going to pay for it? Uh, if you're speaking about the acquisition of the po which, which sector? The, post, the, the post, post office. Okay. Uh, my recommendation to the Township Committee and the administrators pursuing it through, number one uh, is uh, Green Acres funding, uh, which is uh, state level. Uh, on this and uh, secondary is the uh, Morris County Open Space Farmland Preservation Trust Fund which is what Barbara is representing us on as well so between those two grants that come in we'll have to see what uh, we're getting appraisals we've gotten appraisals on the post office property in already it's part of the grant application so let's see how much funding will come through from both those parties uh, toward the acquisition of this property am I explaining that correctly Barb? That's exactly right, and that's how the municipality has done all of their acquisitions, where they use state funding. A state can spend up to 50% of the acquisition cost, and then they match that with county funding. And the town's been very successful in that. Uh, may I ask, who is going to be negotiating the price of this parcel? Will it be the open space people, or will it be the town? Is, what was the process on negotiation? It's Good question, Joe. It's the township. The and township. We need the, the technical assistance of Ms. Davis. She's also provided technical assistance. We have to get an appraisal, right? So well, we the, have the appraisal. So that's the starting point. Yeah. Yes. But it's up to the township to negotiate. Very good. I would also then add that in negotiations, we will recognize to the owner uh, that it is an unbuildable piece of property. Well, the constrictions on the property present day, if they, if they were to build on the same footing, I can't present that argument. But if they were going to change the footing or change it in any way, shape, or form, then they're going to have to comply with the current okay. regulations along the river. You know and, where I'm that's going. That's 150 right? foot. That means that building goes because it's 150 <clears throat> foot. Uh, so, is yes, this, Joe, that's, that's my final follow-up. Is this, will this affect in any way the procurement of the township uh, accessing the right-of-way of Route 24. Oh, well, uh, it's, it, it's done. That's a done deal. Done deal. Yeah, that's a separate project. Done deal. Thank you. Uh, the other, if I can, because you gave me the opportunity, let me tell you, if we, if we uh, opt, as we are, for Green Acres funding and for county funding on this thing, it will go into what's known as the Rossi. That means that this property will stay open space, Joe, in, in perpetuity. Uh, won't be allowed to be built on. There will be no formal uh, construction on this site whatsoever. It will be a park. Uh, yes, I think our landmark commission wants it to be used for a little museum for a while, but oh, yeah. we'll, let, we'll let George argue that out with them. Uh, but uh, but let, let's get the property first. Um, uh, we think it's another piece of the puzzle for that whole core area. I, I happen to agree with you, you know? wholeheartedly. The, the only other thing that just popped into my mind uh, Barbara you said that there would be a, the part there would be parking at that space 
will that in any way impact the businesses use of or non use of those parking places oh uh, well now you have businesses across the street so Barbara what what, what think what Mr. Halko is referring to is we have certain retailers across the street restaurant businesses and uh, they have been using the old parking lot for the post office but I think if we turn it into a park like setting and we put parking in there we would control the parkings to allow for uh, 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 peoples to park in there who are, who are uh, customers of the retailers, let's say. That would be challenging. Challenging. Oh, if she introduced that word again, Joe. Uh, it would be challenging. Visitors to well, the let's, park. Let's say, let's say that we're going to have a certain amount of parking unchallenged on that site that is going to be used for patrons of the park. Mr. Mr. Absolutely, yeah. Mr. 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 Gallagher, go ahead. Joe, I just want to give you another upside real quick. And since we uh, put in our sidewalk on Reynolds Avenue and we have all our children and Chief Bulk our ways in and says 150 to 200 on any half a day at Memorial Junior School, like John and Ron referred to before, there's going to be a lot of happy kids eating their Johnny's Pizza in there, <laughs> bringing their planets. It, it, it's going to be beautiful on a, on a half a day. So once again, that is the American dream. It's going to be beautiful. It's it, a great opportunity and a great option. It, it's almost too perfect, but but it's great. It's almost too perfect. But uh, and, and I'm going to be happy to join you. I hope at the presentation and uh, make our argument. Okay, good. Anyone else like to uh, question Barbara at this time? If not, we're going to let her go home for an early evening. It's nine o'clock. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Just leave, yeah, Barbara, just leave lay, lay it right down. Thank, thank you so much. For okay. Coming. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And at this time, the town yeah, committee. I'm going to open has to act on a resolution. So um, the resolution is a resolution of the Township Committee authorizing the business administrator to submit a one 2017 Morris County Open Space Trust Fund grant application concerning the proposed acquisition of 50 Parsippany Road in Whippany and also designated as Lot 2 in Block 4204 as set forth on the tax map of the Township of Hanover. May we have a motion to so approve the resolution? Second. A motion by Mr. Capola, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call on the resolution, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francio. Aye. So approved. Once again, thank you, Barbara. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, uh, at this time, <clears throat> and before we open to the public and the general session of this meeting, uh, I'd like to take a moment uh, for all of us on the Township Committee to comment uh, and uh, say uh, how concerned and uh, we are over what has taken place just recently in England, in Manchester, England, with the loss of, of lives of such young, young people. Uh, it, it, it's almost incomprehensible uh, for an eight-year-old to be taken in, in, in situations like this. Uh, but our hearts go out to them, and I, I, I hope you'll join me in, in just a moment of silence and, and uh, contemplation of what had just taken place. Thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, gentlemen, at this time, moving forward, I'd like to uh, open the floor for any uh, comments from the general public. Motion open. So moved. So moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If you'd like to address the township committee, you could do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record, Joe. <laughs> I'll still get you out of here before 10. <laughs> You're doing pretty good with that device, I tell you. Jo <laughs> Joseph Mahalko, 12 Anna Terrace, Whippany section of Hanover Township. Um, See, you threw me off. Now I forgot what I was going to tell you. No, I had, an, I had an epiphany. And we all know that that must be a wonderful thing because very, very few times do I have any good thoughts. Uh, last meeting, we had a gentleman here from a section in Cedar Knolls about uh, speeding on the streets and whatnot. Yes. And, and it was very interesting that he said uh, he would go back to his constituents, if you would, and and inform them of the uh, proceed process. Action, actions of the Township Committee? Yeah. Right. Sure. And I, mm. I just thought, I said, how interesting is that, that a single person came from an area to advise his neighbors? What if we encourage each street 
development section to fill this gallery with one person each twice a month would, to hear that, what would, the town would, wouldn't committee that be has wonderful. to say. Wouldn't that be wonderful to I fill just, this room? I just thought I'd throw that out so that those that are sitting home will know that it is possible to have an individual from their direct area come to the meeting and bring them up to date of what our, our minds here. are our minds are not always made up Joe you're right and uh, and hearing from our constituency out there is a wonderful thing and that's what it's all about uh, I can't tell you how much time I spend mr. Gallagher spends, some of us spend on Facebook answering people trying to deliver information and you know what it's successful when we deliver information but it's too bad that we have to deliver information in that fashion when they could come here ask their questions in a dialogue and, and get information and you're right we have nine districts in this town voting districts in this town so even if it came down to representatives from the voting districts coming here and being a, uh, paying attention to the meeting only talking nine di nine people and taking and taking information back uh, you know, I, I think that would be really, really helpful. But thank you, Mr. It's a good idea. Good, thank you. And by the way, in regard to that gentleman's question regarding uh, traffic, I think Joe, uh, George, you were looking into that you were going to do a yeah, well, traffic they're, study they're right on that now, area. They had an issue with the sign not working. It does work now, so the chief is monitoring it and will be getting back to us on a recommendation to the township committee. But in going with what you're talking about, we, we've we made the same suggestion with the neighborhood watch. Just people looking out for each other. Unfortunately, Joe, it's like when something goes wrong, it's only that's the only time somebody wants to get out of the house at night and really come in. But you're right. If you could have some representation here and kind of let us know, rather than finding things out on Facebook or some other social media, which sometimes is not really full and complete information, it would be great. It would solve a lot of problems, okay? because we do take the time, similar to what the animal control issues. Ron and I spent two meetings, three hours each meeting. And boy, were we chastised for that. And we will realize, <laughs> you know, to try to support people, to understand what they want, and we did come up with a resolve, okay? So yeah, I agree, and I think everyone on this committee would agree with you. Be a great idea, be wonderful. This way you're gonna have the correct information flowing from here to the public, from the public back to us. We do listen. Sometimes people don't believe it, but we do. Thanks, George. Ron, one more one more word to Joe Mahalka. Absolutely. You can give you know, two. You know what's funny, Joe, is they call Ron and I out sometimes. It'll say, Ronald F. Francioli and Thomas A. Scaliger, what about this? And no matter how people get in touch with us, our job is to is to work and represent and try to be problem solvers. And most of the time we, we do a pretty good job. But we can't really work on something unless we know about it. So like you're saying, sharing information in any format is, is a great thing because I can't tell you how much time we spend looking at different pieces of the town that we haven't been in that much because we're hearing about it through Facebook. We're getting our emails and we're texting. So I think the idea of one person from each, each di district is a great idea. That, that would be a great idea to physically be here, which doesn't mean, well, you opened up a whole dialogue now. That doesn't mean that we're not looking at uh, social networking, and, and I know Economic Development Committee has been looking at it, the library's been looking at it from a policy standpoint. It's, it's not just easy for municipalities uh, to have a Facebook page. Parsippany seems to be doing it very successfully, but I think Mayor Barberi's doing it in a little different way. Uh, but there are certain liabilities, there are certain issues when municipalities enter into social networks. Uh, who will do the commenting, in what official way, and we are liable for statements that we make in social networks. So we've got to be very, very careful of that. Uh, but we're looking at it, and we're hoping to expand um, our transparency, if you will, through social networking. So we're, we're, doing our, we're trying to do our best. I'll give John. a name to your idea. It's called the listening check. <laughs> and the listening check is an invitation that the members of this committee are providing to the community to come in on this the during our township committee meetings and provide us with the issues they want us to listen about and hopefully we'll be able to provide them with intelligent answers to their questions as opposed to having things go running around in circles and not really understanding what is going on so the listening check is hopefully something that we're going to see more people participate and we thank you for bringing it to our attention the floor is still open if anyone else would like to address the township committee they can do so 
Hi, Tom Weiss, 46 Country Wood Drive. I was here a few months ago uh, concerned about the uh, <coughs> voting in Mount View, uh, Mount View School. Um, in November, especially November, it is super dark until about 7, 7.30 in the morning and after about 4.30 in the afternoon until we leave at 9.30. Pitch black because the entrance to the- um, Is in the back. Is in the back. Yep. Yep. That's the number one. Number yeah. two, it's painted in blacktop. Yeah, yeah. There's no contract. Yeah. And at the time, um, I asked if you could possibly find a way to get some lights there just for that particular day. Sure. In the morning and in yeah. the afternoon. I was curious how that's coming along. Uh, you know, I'll be very, very honest. I, I don't know the follow through that we've had on this, but I can tell you this. Um, we could get the, the uh, to help out. We can get the OEM. The, we, we, we have yeah. portable lighting systems. We have portable lighting We use systems. them all over the fields all the time. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, if we go down to Allegro School, I don't know, what do we got? About six systems on, yeah. that, on the school. What, what, what's this they're called? portable, they're movable. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get uh, our, our chief uh, or recreation department, whoever we work through, I don't know, Bob, is that? It's Tony really Ford through DPW, the, um, that DPW. we own the portable lights. Yeah, all the right. ones that you right. see at Allegro are rented by the soccer club. I think we own one, maybe two sets, but certainly we could deploy well, them over Mountview. I vote there, too. I know exactly what you mean. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, let's it, go to Brian's it, rent. If we had to rent them for a day or a week, we could oh, do yeah. that, too. It's, it's even worth doing that for the day. But, I mean, if we own one or two, we'll, we'll move it up We there. should have, because Tom is what goes on. I'm in there at 8.15 to set up for the, for the elections. Yeah. And I tripped trying to get oh, to yeah. it. Yeah. Imagine the other <clears throat> senior citizens oh, yeah. To, yeah. who are getting there early because they want to go out. Yeah. They can't walk on there. That has and, got and to be one of the most awkward voting stations it's we have. Cold to let the light out. You yeah. Know? You know, Ron, a lot of the schools it's a, it's have a lighting really, around them. Really I'm bad. Sorry, no, I said, to Ron, a lot of the schools have lighting around them. Like Salem Drive School has lights all around oh, the building. Great. Uh, Brian is on the board of ed. Maybe I'll reach out to Mike Wasco and Brian tomorrow, and, and we'll take care of this. So you, you want to work on that with school? Yeah, I'll work on that with, with, uh, with the school, and I'll work on it with Brian for <coughs> You're on the record. I mean, who, who wants to get has to see somebody it's get injured? It's not a big deal. That's really my concern. Somebody's going to fall and really get hurt. And it's, it's a good only idea. In November, right? November. Okay. This this time of year for the uh, for the. Right. The, 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 the primary, the primary, it's like in the uh, in November, in general six o'clock and they're open, nine o'clock they're closed. We don't leave until the nine thirty or the ten. So, and it's it's black out there again too. So, we need some some kind of light. Although, <clears throat> there is one saving grace in that in the afternoon. When it gets dark, all the kids have gone home. They walk, people walk out the front door instead of going back out the back door. But that's not supposed to be the case. But they do because there's light. Do they, do they so, have lighting back there? A lot very of the limited, schools very do. Limited, very limited. But I know it's dark back there. I, I, very limited. We'll make a few phone calls on, on and, and take care of this. You know what? I would appreciate it because I don't like to see anybody get hurt Are because they can't see what they're walking. Facebook, right, Mr. Malco? <laughs> We might, we might even make a formal recommendation to the board, to the school board, uh, to examine the lighting that they presently have back there on a day-to-day -day use. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of, uh, I haven't been there at those very dark hours. Um, yeah, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, once a year I am. Uh, but I don't know what lighting they have back there? existing yeah. back there. Maybe take a look at it. We'll take a look at it. Very limited. Because Good suggestion. I mean, I'm just, just thinking out loud, and the thing is that that exit, maybe it's just a fire exit. So they wouldn't have lighting. They just get out and go. Yeah, and yeah. who? Okay. Maybe it was never thought of putting a light there. We'll like, get some answers. I can almost guarantee you, though, we'll have lighting up there for election night. That's for sure. You know, yeah. I'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll just conclude in it. My Wolf. <laughs> all we have to have is one person fall, Thank you. and that's too many. The one okay. too many. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Okay. The floor remains open. Anyone else like to address the township committee? Jim, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, guys. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> we waited for you. <laughs> um, name and address for the record. My, my name is Jim Martin. I live at 12 Fanick Road. Um, the question what I had... What Jim really looking, wants to say is 12 Fanick Driveway, but go ahead. <laughs> that's, I looked at the sign when I left. <laughs> it says 12 Fanick Road. Um, but I was 
going to question, where is the Whippany Center that you guys have discussed earlier? The Whip Whippany, uh, Whippany CBS Village or Whippany Center? Whippany Town Center? Uh, yeah, whatever the thing was, it said that you're Whippany setting Village. up the rules that you need so many parking spots uh, and all of that stuff. Where the firehouse is located, where Chase Bank is, where CVS, CVS the vision is, is that okay. would be the Whippany Center. Okay. Well, Whippany, Whippany Village, but yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you guys I put it down as Whippany Center, and I didn't know where Whippany Center was. Yeah. But, okay, that, okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay, that answers it. Did me. you have a question about it, or what's going on? No, I just wanted to know, there was so much detail about the Whippany Center. Every time you hear it, you wonder where it is. And I'm saying, where is this yeah, place? Sometimes I wonder myself. Where it is. <laughs> it's very disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, they just called it the Whippany Village, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, uh, Actually, it, it got its name because uh, if the whole project, which is a planned unit development, that's an official little word for the zone, comes to fruition, it was meant to be a cohesive village of stores and shops and so forth that with the same look, uh, street lighting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And that's still on the books. Where the Chase Bank books. is and that uh, firehouse, that whole still, general still, area. Still may be happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank Jim. you. Floor remains open. No further? Motion to close. Motion to close. All in Sir. favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Administrator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with our agenda, we have ordinances for consideration on adoption and public hearing. The first is docketed as ordinance number 14 2017, <coughs> which is listed on your agenda. So at this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearing? So moved. A second. motion by uh, Committee Man second. Bruno, seconded by Committee Man Capola on roll call. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Ferramasca? Aye. Mr. Bruno? Aye. Mr. Capola? Aye. And Mr. Francioli? Aye. We'll also note for the record that we have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the May 3rd issue of the Daily Record. So at this time, is there any person in uh, chambers wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 14-2017? Will we close? Seeing none, hearing none, we have a motion by Mr. Capola. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Bruno and Mr. Gallagher. Uh, this is a roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, uh, hey, on... You yes. skip number six, the uh, the, pro the uh, oh, minutes. Thank you. Oh, we'll go back to that. I just wanted to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be thorough. <laughs> thank you. Uh, this will be on adoption. This is roll call for adoption. Uh, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, authorizing the purchase and installation of a new Motorola Solutions Incorporated 911 equipment and emergency notification software and services through the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program all in accordance with NJSA 52-34-6.13 and further appropriating the sum of $177,500 from the 2017 Capital Improvement Fund and all prior years be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the May 31st issue of the Daily Record in accordance with law. So on adoption, on roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted, and then we'll go back now to the minutes. We have the approval of the Township Committee minutes, the regular minutes of May 11th, and the Bid Committee of May 16th, 2017. Move we approve. We have a motion for approval Second. by Mr. Capola, seconded by Mr. Um, Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Okay, moving back down to public hearing and adoption of ordinances, we have the next ordinance, which is docketed as ordinance number 16-2017. We have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full 
in the May 17th issue of the Daily oh, yeah. Record. May we now have a motion to convene the public hearing? So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Bruno, seconded by Mr. Capola. On roll call for public hearing, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 16 2017? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion for second. the public second. hearing. A motion by Mr. Coppola and seconded by Mr. Fermasca. On roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, amending and supplementing section three of ordinance number 11-2017 entitled an ordinance authorizing the furnishing and installation of a prefabricated concrete concession area and restroom kitchen appliances and other related improvements for the brickyard athletic field at B Meadow Park and further supplementing ordinance number 11-2017 by appropriating the sum of $60,000 from the Capital Improvement Fund of 2017 on all and all prior years for the financing of the project be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the May 31st issue of the Daily Record. May we now have a motion on adoption. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fermaska, seconded by Mr. Bruno. On roll call for adoption. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue now on page two. We have two ordinances for introduction. Ordinance number 17 2017 is an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover authorizing the purchase of one new diesel powered. 7.3 cubic yard volumetric capacity municipal street sweeper Simco model 600 regenerative air sweeper or approved equal and further authorizing the appropriation of two hundred and seventy three thousand dollars from the 2017 capital improvement fund and all prior years for the financing of the street sweeper purchase this ordinance will be further considered for public hearing and final passage on the date of June 8th at 8.30 p.m. here in the main meeting room. And at that time, any person wishing to be heard concerning the ordinance will be given the opportunity to be heard. In addition, the Township Committee is authorizing the clerk to advertise the ordinance in full with the notice of introduction in the daily record in accordance with law. May we now have a motion on introduction. So moved. So moved by Second. Mr. Gallagher. Seconded by Mr. Fermasca. A roll call on introduction. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So introduced. <laughs> and next is ordinance number 18-2017. This is an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, amending and supplementing Chapter 166 of the Code of the Township, entitled Land Use and Development Legislation, by amending the permitted uses within shopping centers in the DS and OBS-DS zone districts. The ordinance will be further considered for public hearing and final passage uh, at the Township Committee meeting on July 13th at 8.30 in the evening here at the municipal building and at that time any person wishing to be heard concerning the ordinance <coughs> will be given the opportunity to speak. The ordinance and the notice of introduction will be published in the daily record in accordance with law. May we now have a motion on introduction. So moved. So moved by Second. Mr. Fermasca, seconded by Mr. Bruno. On roll call for introduction. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola Aye. and Mr. Francioli. Aye. So introduced. <laughs> and we proceed now, ladies and gentlemen, with the resolutions as a consent agenda on pages two 
and three, and I would ask the Township Committee if they have any questions concerning resolutions 9A through 9A. Just a, just a quest question. Just yes. A question. I, I'm going to get an answer from shortly on, on my question. It's a legal question. Pertaining to the resolutions? Yeah. Pertaining to the resolutions. A legal question right. about yes. about which one? Um, uh, D. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is on the consent agenda. Uh, it's a request by Village Supermarket, um, which is the shop right, uh, to expand their hours uh, for one particular day. That's 9 a.m. on Sunday, uh, July 23rd, 2017. And um, apparently, it's you know based on the, the correspondence we receive, uh, there's going to be another store opening up that day and uh they also have a package it's tit for tat joe uh package goods <coughs> license and uh so they'd like to be open early that day as well uh so from a legal uh perspective if you'd like i'd i'd make a recommendation uh to the governing body uh i would i would recommend that uh you in fact uh consent to that request to grant the extended hours thank you you're welcome Mm. Are there any other questions from members of the governing body concerning any <coughs> other resolution? No, I move they be approved as motion a motion by Mr. Fermat. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Coppola. On roll call, the resolutions as a consent agenda. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Fermas? Aye. Mr. Bruno? Aye. Mr. Coppola? Aye. And Mr. Francio? Aye. Okay, as we proceed, ladies and gentlemen, on the last page, page three, uh, we have raffle applications also as a consent agenda. Raffle application 3028, the Calais Foundation, and on-premise 5050. Raffle application 3029, North Stars Association for Competitive Gymnastics, and on-premise 5050. And raffle application 3030, also North Stars Association for Competitive Gymnastics, a tricky trade. May we have a motion for approval. So moved by Mr. Pola. Second. 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 Second by uh, Mr. Uh, Bruno on roll call. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the Township Committee, that clears the agenda. The Business Administrator, Township Clerk, and I thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to open the floor once again. Motion open. So moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the floor is open. If anyone would like to address the Township Committee, they can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Seeing none. Motion to close. Up. No. Hold. Hold the motion. <laughs> Joe Kowalski, 24 Nye Avenue. Can you just um, uh, j G inside of the uh, resolutions of consent agenda? Can you just elaborate on that, uh, stating the intent of the Township Committee? Rehabilitation to program you're referring to? Yes, sir. Uh, G is part of a COA program. Uh, it, uh, by adopting this program, it allows the Township Committee to use uh, COA, get COA credit and use COA monies, which are in our fair share housing funds, et cetera, for the rehabilitation of homes that qualify for such rehabilitation, meaning upgrades and, and uh, repairs, et cetera, to keep them uh, in, in our COA allotment. That's, that's kind of what that means. And just, um, I've been out of this uh, conversation um, in the briefest of synopsis, um, did we ever come to a resolution in regards to what they wanted and what we are trying to counter? What co what Num co is doing? Just what, what's happening something. before the courts? Um, we uh, we we have certain uh, we have a sense of some numbers. I'm going to be. I have to be. Have to be. I have to couch this in a little caution because we thought we had our arms around a number, uh, but we really don't yet. Uh, but what am I trying to say? The uh, the court accepted our fair share housing plan. And uh, his honor and through the master that's been involved in this have pretty much said to Hanover, uh, I'll, I'll simplify this. Hey, guys, you did a great job. The Fair Hair Housing Plan is, is, is really well, uh, well defines what we're trying to do. Uh, but uh, in turn, uh, we're still being challenged on the number. 
so even though we feel uh, we met our, our required uh, third round of uh, with our previous of, uh, construction yeah the, okay. uh, his honor the court and I'm, I'm saying that in a generality it was really through the master there are several factors in this are now saying to Hanover uh, you got to do more so we're, we're, we're trying I guess Fred we're trying to find out right. what more is we're negotiating uh, do we have negotiating points? Yeah. Do we have inventories of uh, other properties that we can look at that may qualify to offset this? Yep. So uh, that's that's all. In yeah, the, and I think in the also mix. at the last meeting, the governing body had on the agenda for the public portion of the meeting where I <clears throat> I went through all the numbers and where we are, and if you get a chance to take a look at that that aspect of of the meeting, you, you know the the township wanted me to just go through where we are in this matter because there's a num almost all of our neighboring communities, I'd say 80% of them are still involved in this or are going to be. So uh, just not, and not to interrupt, um, this is the only thing, and it's probably a legal question more than anything else. Um, which, because these numbers, uh, we have a requirement and then um, say a developer can come in and, and they can kind of, however you want to say it, um, you're eligible for this many houses um, and then look into different plots and say we'd like to develop this and kind of I don't know how do you want to put it maybe strong arm us and to be saying we want to be able to develop here and whatnot is there some sort of legal action we can take with some of the other municipalities to say you know if they're mandating this amount of houses for the different towns um, the, when a developer comes in they should have some sort of um, like infrastructure responsibility that they have to do on top of just the construction because it's a far more complicated um, equation we, than just building we, houses. We, you know, we have certain, if I can, if yeah. I can, we we have, township has certain protections against that developer. Let's okay. let's take that scenario, and the developer challenges us. And by the way, there are five right now is it four, uh, five? four intervenors yeah that are that are challenging us right and now that's, and that's before from the different course. municipalities so, it's the so same that's, story that's happening there these developers are challenging us meanwhile the courts looking at our co-op contributions etc and meanwhile hanover is resolving our co to the court if we resolve our co to the court then the court says to the challengers you know what you got no case so our best defense and, and uh, i didn't i didn't clip for my law degree so work with me here uh, our best defense uh, on this is to resolve our COA issue uh, and having done that the court kind of works for us now and protects us against developer challenges right and and at this point the township has been very compliant <clears throat> and right now we are protected from that so there's that scenario has not existed uh, I can give you an example uh, we had on a, on a major track of property a developer came in and said we really want to have some residential housing uh, and you're going to need this for your affordable housing and the township committee said no we're, we're not interested it's not zoned for residential housing and the developer <clears throat> said well then you're probably not going to see me bring anybody else for that property and within a few months they did bring a uh, commercial property not a residential okay. development so so right now there's nothing in the law that would permit a developer to you know for lack of a better word and it's used sometimes strong arm we're not in that position mm. and that's what we seek to continue to have that protection and that's why we're in this case other if the township wasn't in this case then developers could come in and try to leverage and things like that but we're not in that position the only issue that the township really has is it's a desirable community so you're going to always have development pressures there's some communities where right now this really isn't an issue and there's not interveners there's not, there's not as much interest but because the infrastructure and the quality of life and and what that you know has been uh, planned for and developed has led to a great deal of interest and so we try to protect that going forward if you have immunity then a court can't come in and a builder can't come in and say this is the way your zoning should be. So that's the whole purpose of. So of right what now we're doing. we have some, we do some have it. community, We've and then, it. Like, and then and in regards to just uh, mm -hmm. rough, is there any numbers that are on the table right now in regards to? Uh, I, I I probably could throw a range uh, okay, from sure. from, a, from an well, area of eighty four yeah, on uh, eighty four yeah, on up to uh, uh, several hundred. Yeah, you know? I think we you know I think last meeting I 
kind of delineated there's the fair share housing number and then there's the the townships expert and the municipalities expert and uh, there's a pretty vast divide uh, but yeah. right now um, what I reported at the last meeting is the expert that the municipalities have uh, you have the next 10 years to complete that affordable housing obligation and the township has already not only has these developments on the list but has them built so in other words if our experts report is correct Joe good night we don't <clears throat> even need to have additional development no rezoning mm -hmm. we've already met our obligation through to 2025 that's what we're trying to protect <clears throat> going forward it's not easy no absolutely. And there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure from fair share housing but that's as the mayor said and that's what we're what we keep working on and we'll have more updates as we go along okay i appreciate mm -hmm. it thank you joe it's a complicated area co and uh and your questions are relevant but what what i'm working with the committee on and what i've suggested to them tonight is uh, in the future, we'd like to set up, probably in the immediate future, a series of lectures, uh, maybe over at the library. We're going to work this out. Uh, and those lectures will be on various subjects. The first one, COA, uh, putting it in terms and language that we all our residents understand. Uh, you know, because they look at this is issue and they look at what's going on with density housing and they look at what's going on. And these fancy words come into it where we're compelled to do a certain amount of COA in what's called inclusionary, which means for every one COA house I build, I have to build uh, uh, four other markets, so they're one-fifth of it, uh, on and on and on. Uh, the, the, but uh, the we're, we're going to try and be more explanation to you. you. I mean, it's already been stated. The problem is that this, this is a town council meeting and there's, you know, there's, there's less people than I have fingers, you know, um, yeah. and then people will love to complain about everything um, and be misinformed. Um, the other suggestion that I had in regards to um, trying to make people mis uh, more informed is try to have um, like district representatives um, based on geography because when they had um, the problem that was happening in Trailwood, right? With they had not a problem, but a developer wanted to put that. Uh, oh, the, uh, the factory. I was the only person from Whippany who was there. Yeah. Now, when we have a problem in this section, you yeah. won't typically see a person from there. So what's happening is if it only affects your yard, that's when people oh, will show up. So if we had some sort of way to be able to, you know, make committees to be responsible to try to educate everybody and then we at least have more of the town as a whole together. Now, that, that's not an easy undertaking, um, but it definitely seems like if it's not happening in their area, people it, it, don't yeah, care. In, in an ideal world, and I, I think I've said this, so, so forgive me, but in an ideal world, you've got, you've got something uh, in, in excess of 3,500 uh, heads of household in this town. Yeah. And uh, every time we have a meeting, it would be nice that they all got a mailing on their kitchen table that there's a meeting tonight and this is the agenda, but we can't, yeah. if, economically, feasibly, can't do that. So we're using every means we can uh, to try and get public out here. And as Joe uh, explained earlier in, in his comments, if we had somebody even from each district of nine districts yeah. who showed up, it could report back uh, so that if something was happening in a particular district, a building was going in, another quick check is going in or something, uh, that they, uh, uh, they then fill this room. Yeah. Uh, because we're only going to come out when we're interested in something. Otherwise, uh, we're going to stay home, comfortable, and we're going to feel that the governing body's got it under control. So you know what? I want to watch Dancing with the Stars, and that's it. So, uh, But we, we've got to do more to encourage people to come out to these meetings and our board meetings, I might add. Come to a planning board meeting, you'll see only the applicant there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the, just the way it is. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Okay, uh, floor remains open. Motion to close. Motion to close. Sorry. Okay. So, um, okay, gentlemen. At this time, uh, to, 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 um, to us. Okay, uh, from the township committee. Comments from the committee. All right, committee member Gallagher. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Thank you Ron. <clears throat> uh, we are. This is a beautiful time of year, and with this time of year. Uh, comes a lot more patience and responsibilities, especially on our roads with our children and our bicycles. And also, we have prom season coming up and graduation season coming up. So we are going to work to put the message out there with School and Park and with Hanover Township PD, with our Board of Educations, that please be careful. Uh, Jim Herbert on our Regional Board of Ed is working to once again get a car to put on the front lawn. It's going to be after Memorial Day. So it's not on there for the parade. 
but we're just going to work with everybody we can to raise awareness to let people know it all comes down to a decision. It all comes down to being responsible and caring and uh, for one another and uh, maybe making that phone call to somebody if you feel like you shouldn't be driving or a friend shouldn't be driving. So we're going to step up this effort and also with the Substance Awareness Council in Hanover Township. We're coming into, again, a beautiful time of year, but it could be a very dangerous time of year. Mm -hmm. So everybody, please be careful. And we're going to step up our effort for the next 30 to 40 days to do everything we can. Uh, the other thing I want to say is uh, May 12th, we had Hanover Township's big night out at Whippany Park. It was a great night, very successful. We had a lot of people there, a lot of kids, a lot of law enforcement, fire departments, <coughs> Knights of Columbus, Commitment Coppola was uh, once again cooking the dogs. <laughs> Got a nice recognition for your hot dog cooking today in the paper, George. Very well deserved. And thanks to Wegmans for their contribution of those fine hot dogs. Wegmans, they were excellent quality hot dogs. Wegmans provided some very good hot dogs. Tim, Thank we really much. appreciated them. And Thank the you. water. And the water and, and the ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> yep. Joe, your ice cream sandwiches were there. Uh, May 16th, uh, the Hanover Park Regional Board of Education with East Hanover Police. Of course, HTPD and the Morris Area Coalition had um, Eric Legrand and Steve mm. Weatherford. And it was an incredible night. Jim, you were there. I mean, it was, uh, we were all speechless. It was great. It was motivating. It was, it was a beautiful night. And a lot of people were there. I think there had to be over 300 people there, which was beautiful. Uh, I also want to just say, uh, to conclude with the DPW, is I always say Hanover Township PD is 24-7, uh, 365, but so are these guys. Our fields look beautiful. All our property looks great. Our buildings look great. Fields look great. And you will see them bright and early. And, and George, I want to talk to you about the forecast. It looks like it's not going to rain now on Monday. I want to talk to you about that. Hope not. But they will no. be there very early, working hard, and they will be there late, packing everything up. So the DPW is uh, second, second to none. They do a fantastic job, and I want them to know we all appreciate everything they do. Absolutely. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, John, Deputy uh, Mayor. Yes. Uh, under the theme, great things happen in Hanover. Uh, Proud to announce that a new scoliosis center opened at 218 Ridgedale Avenue. And what is unique about this center, it's bringing technology called EOS. EOS is breakthrough technology, Nobel, Nobel Prize winning science behind it. And what's so special about it is it produces a 99% reduction in the amount of x-ray. So if you're a child who's at the age of five who's been diagnosed with scoliosis, you might be looking at 200 x-rays during the time of your treatment. This effectively reduces the amount of the radiation or x-ray that you would be exposed to down to from 200 to two. Mm. So this is a major breakthrough. It's one of a kind in the state of New Jersey. Um, so we're very proud that it's open here and, and it's a full service um, scenario that will also treat adults with hip, knee, or spinal conditions as well. It's just not children. Second topic I just want to bring to everyone's attention is Hanover EDAC, Hanover's Economic Development Advisory Council. Everybody hears a lot about this, but what EDAC is, it's representation of people who sit in these chairs. It's representation of people who live in our community and they work together to try to develop recommendations. They're not a, a, a governing body, but they develop recommendations for the Township Committee to evaluate. They develop recommendations for potential corporates to come into Hanover Township, which they're very successful at doing, as well as recommendations of the Planning Board. They're going to have a special presentation the evening of June 8th um, in this room and the topic is called, What is Hanover 2026? That'll be Hanover's 350th anniversary. And they're going to be bringing in, in their words, their assessment, having worked on this for over a year, a blueprint guide to, for the future of responsible, and I triple underscore the word responsible, economic development in Hanover Township over the next decade. So I encourage all to participate in that. Um, in addition, your green team, which is very active, wanted me to bring this to your attention. Um, the Morris County MUA, and this is at the back of, of a very nice document if you have not read it yet, 
called 2017 Spring Summer Hanover Happenings, which is an excellent piece that was delivered to your homes. Quarterly. If you haven't seen this, you should go through it. And one of the things that they wanted me to punctuate for you is that there's a special program happening on Saturday, June 3rd. And what's so special about that is this is an opportunity for you to dispose of waste materials, things like oils, paints, herbicides, fertilizers, motor oil, these things that are hanging out in your garage or your Tires, basement batteries. That, that you want to dispose of in an environmentally sensitive manner. So I encourage you to participate at that. It's going to be Saturday, June the 3rd at the Morris County Public Safety Training Academy at 500 West Hanover Avenue. Mayor, that concludes my remarks. Thank you, John. Almost concludes mine. I ran out of ink. Um, <laughs> son of a gun. Very good. George? Yes. Uh, we will know. You know <laughs> I'm hoping that it's not going to rain on Monday. Um, as, as noted, you know, the, the weather changed. I hope so. But we will keep it. We are keeping a sharp eye on it. And unfortunately, last year they had, they canceled it. And then by 11 o'clock, the sun was shining. But, you know, there's a lot of prep work that's involved, especially with preparing breakfast, you know, starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. So just keep keep tuned. We'll see how that all turns out. Uh, the Veterans Alliance right now, they're doing their poppy sale. So, you know, if you happen to be around, uh, I was selling them at Stop and Shop and Quick Check. Uh, stop by, pick up a poppy, okay? Mm -hmm. It does help out the veterans. Landmark Commission is doing a good job now with the stone restoration. They finished the, uh, the tunnel, the crypt, and they're working on other stones inside the, the burial yard. And our new two new police officers are currently in training, and Chief tells me they're doing very well. That's Great. it. Thanks, George. Very good. Bobby. <clears throat> yeah, a couple things. The um, fireworks, hard to believe. We're talking about Fourth of July. It's just Memorial Day, but uh, June 28th, a little early this year, in an attempt to be uh, frugal, which we always are, um, that'll give us an opportunity if there is a rain, a rain out that night to have them on Thursday the uh, 29th. So June 28th right here at the Municipal Complex. Food trucks, DJ, fireworks. We've had them here the last couple of years. Really worked out well. So plan ahead. Hope to see everyone there. And the, cummer, the uh, summer rather concert series is going to take place at Malapartis Park this year in anticipation of construction over at the brickyard of our new restroom facilities and snack bar facility. Uh, we decided to move it to the other side of town, uh, maybe give those people a little easier opportunity to come out and see the summer concerts. So those dates are July 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st, and we hope to see everyone there once again at Malapartis for the summer concert series. Um, also, the Rotary Club Duck Race, just to give them a plug. Mm -hmm. That nice fundraiser, the Rotary Club, does a lot of great things in town. They'll be having their duck race at Malapartis mm -hmm. on June 3rd. Um, please come out and support the Rotary Club, who does a lot of great things. Foundation's 5K1. Both are on the third. The um, Educational Hanover Foundation. Oh. Yeah, they got the Hanover Township Educational Foundation. Yeah. Also, the morning of the, um, the, the duck race, yes. exactly, over at Whippany Park High School. So yeah. June 3rd, week from Saturday, big day, and hopefully the weather will hold out. <laughs> Another run. Great. Very good. Thanks, Bob. Very good. Uh, we had the honor uh, to uh, be at a, uh, a dinner awarding... Uh, George. What, George? What? What? What do you say? I just want to know. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Did I miss something? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, both uh, John Fermosca and myself, uh, Joe Giorgio, and George Capal all had the honor of uh, being at a dinner for uh, Sally Anacone and uh, Art. Uh, I can never pronounce Art's last name. Oh, Vespigiani. Yeah, Vespigiani. At uh, the Whippany River Watershed Action Committee, had a fundraiser. And the honorees were both Art and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, at that particular dinner, uh, Art, uh, both Art and uh, Sal were recognized for uh, their exceptional service to the Whippany River Watershed Committee. So it was an honor to be there, and it was an honor for us to be able to present a plaque to him at the same time. So that, that worked out very, very well. Um, I want to comment on one thing, and I'm going to uh, probably have uh, um, probably have uh, 
a Fred comment on this on the, on the legal end. Uh, Fred, we met, uh, this is on the uh, uh, Stony Brook uh, Community Farm and Garden, uh, which has been a very controversial issue before community. Uh, and I want to thank so many people uh, who signed up for the garden, who have been so supportive of us. Uh, because of the delays on the part of the contractor, some weather, but mostly the contractor, uh, we've had to forestall the opening of the garden. And uh, very disappointed in that, but we returned dollars to all of those who took gardens. And uh, in turn, uh, when we do cut the ribbon and open this garden, they will get the season uh, compliments of uh, Hanover Township for their consideration of, of what we've gone through. Uh, the, uh, we met with the contractors uh, this past uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday. 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 Yes, Tuesday, and uh, we had a very, uh, uh, how should I call it, a very uh, direct and deliberate meeting uh, with a, uh, an understanding of uh, what's to be done and what our expectation is. Uh, seems to be the issues between the contractor and his uh, uh, subcontractor on some uh, matters of the irrigation systems that are going on on this. Uh, people might know that this farm is just not a piece of field that, uh, that the uh, folks can rake and, and farm on. This, is, uh, this includes uh, uh, watering areas, irrigation systems that are going in, electric systems that are going in, foundations for sheds that are going in, uh, fencing that has to be buried three feet underground and six feet, uh, excuse me, eight feet tall, uh, inclusive of uh, getting the ground preparation and the soils on top and mulch, etc. It's quite an undertaking. Um, of course, it went to the lowest bidder, and uh, but I think uh, with attorneys this week, this past Tuesday, we came to some conclusions. I think I should I should I venture a guess as to what we what, what our cutoff was to uh, this I think gentleman. You can, Mayor. I uh, think so. We uh, uh, in agreement, I might add, with the contractor, uh, we have given them till the 16th of June to complete absolutely complete all work on the farm. Uh, which means the fencing is in, the irrigation system's working, inspections have taken place, and uh, we are uh, looking forward to having an open house in ribbon cutting at that time. We are more concerned with providing you with a growing season. Now, certain plants are good for uh, cool weather, tomatoes being one of them. Uh, so the recommendation for tomatoes is to be planted in June, as well as peppers and other types of uh, uh, vegetables. So. Uh, uh, where uh, we anticipated that we might lose another season over this issue, uh, it looks like we might be able to recover it. And all of those who have signed up for gardens will be uh, notified, uh, unless for any foreseen circumstances there is any other delay on this, then I'm looking forward to being out there on the 16th uh, to see this open. So, Fred, do you have any comments? No, that's, on that, that's accurate, Mayor. Uh, yes, so we've, we've gone through an awful lot to get to that point. And, uh, this is really something that, uh, you know, you have the low bidder and you've got to stick with it. And uh, if this doesn't, if this for some reason uh, gets off that date, then I, I imagine the township committee will look at their legal options. Uh, so let's just hope uh, we're at the point where on June 16th they will be complete. Thank you. Very good. Uh, finally, Memorial Day is coming up. So 830, uh, we're starting our ceremonies here at Town Hall. Uh, uh, from this ceremony, it goes over to uh, Whippany Park High School where the parade will begin and it will, uh, will finish up as usual at the uh, American Legion uh, where uh, we'll all assemble and, uh, and talk. Hopefully the weather will hold down. What are they going to do if there's a rain date? Well, they didn't last year. They just can't. We had it inside at the Legion. Yeah. Well, last year, we did have it inside. We did have it inside. Uh, yeah. So, so for the public who's going to be asking that question about rain, I mean, if if rain is threatening, or if it's raining, uh, you can be sure that the Veterans Association and the Veterans Alliance will probably conduct the services inside. So, go from there. Breakfast is at seven. Yeah. Breakfast at oh, Obia. That's right. Breakfast. Yeah. Is that open to the public? Yeah, and that's over at the Rec Hall. Yep. Yeah, 7 o'clock breakfast at the Rec Hall. If you'd like to join us, happy to see you there. Anything else from the committee? Nothing? Hearing none? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Thank you.
That's a great idea. She, she, she Hello, Mr. Martin. She would be excellent. Oh, for the lighting? I'm yes. glad you brought it to our attention.